Good morning, and welcome to Pastor's House Call. It's another gorgeous day in the neighborhood, and I'm glad that you could join with me, and I truly hope that uh, this is a day that you will truly feel the blessing of God and through His Word, and so uh, let us gather together and uh, just enjoy this time in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Revelations 21.9 says, And the angel of the Lord said, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb, and he carried me away in the spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for this uh, day that we can just spend with you for a few minutes and just uh, enjoy your love and your grace and uh, just uh, relish in the, the, just the love of your Holy Spirit as you, you speak to us through your word. And so, Lord, again, just uh, we look forward to that day, uh, that day when, uh, you know, the Lamb of God will come for his precious bride and and uh, we, the church, will uh, once again be uh, meeting in the sky with him and uh, taking us home to his kingdom. And so, Lord, just uh, watch over us each and every day as we prepare our hearts for that precious time of Jesus' return. And we ask this all in Christ's precious name. Amen. John Ortberg tells the story of a time years ago when he took one of his daughters to see her very first movie, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs which incidentally happens to be my favorite Disney movie as well because I love the dwarfs. Um, but I digress. For an hour and a half, they lived in another world. I mean, Ortberg said that his daughter was just intrigued, but Ortberg said he, he had forgotten um, how dark, you know, Disney movies can be to a two-year-old. And so, of course, his little girl cried at the wicked stepmother. She cried when, um, you know, Snow White bit of that apple. She cried uh, when the coming of the curse was. But Ortberg said, interesting, his tears came at another place. He said, Snow White was cleaning out the cottage and singing, Someday my prince will come. Suddenly, it was as if he said that it was his little girl that was in that screen. And he was thinking about that day when her prince would come whoever that was going to be. And he would just come and she would go away with him, go away with her prince. He said at that moment, he had a new empathy for those dwarfs. He said, you know, here they were. They gave their house, they risked their lives. They did all these things for this foolish little girl who decided to eat that forbidden fruit. And then she falls asleep and breaks their heart. Then the prince comes. He awakens Snow White with a kiss and she runs off with him. No regrets. But of course, if you think about it, that is how it was meant to be. That was her destiny. And you know, my friends, that is our destiny as well. You see, each one of us has tasted the forbidden fruit. We've all eaten of the apple. We have all fallen under the curse. We are all, said the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2, dead in our trespasses and sins. In reality, we're nothing more than dead people walking. But the reality is that though we were dead in our trespass and sins, because of the great love of God, who is rich in mercy, he has made us alive in Christ Jesus, even though we were dead in our trespasses and sin. My friends, though we have freely eaten of that apple, still the promise and the hope we have is the Prince comes. He comes to bring freedom from the curse and life from death. So our, still, our prince still comes continually to kiss his bride. And when that happens, ha, ha, we wake up and we experience life, real life, Christ's life, eternal life. Thus is the love of the prince for his precious bride. Amen, my friends. God loves you and so do I.